I'm going to take a wild guess right now. You have an Instagram account, don't you? Yeah, I know. And you're probably thinking, Cody, how do you know this? I'm not a wizard. I mean, if I was a wizard, I'd be a pretty damn good wizard. No, it's pretty obvious. If you look around today, everybody's got their phone out. They're always taking pictures. They're always uploading stories to their Instagram account. It's just something that kind of is in our culture nowadays. People are allowed to document their day-to-day lives in a fun and creative way. It's a, it's a way to express yourself and kind of feel involved in the community and just connect with people all over the world. Just this year, Instagram's at like 800 million active users, which is insane. So pretty much everybody you know is probably on this app in some form or another, which means there's a great opportunity if you have a personal brand or maybe you're working at an agency where you have many brands that you work with and you want to figure out a way to kind of creatively distinguish your brand against other ones. So I think there's a very simple way to attract new people to your brand and kind of delight the current followers that you have. And that's through illustration and animation. So we're going to illustrate a graphic and we're going to animate it. And I'm going to show you how to upload that to Instagram and have this kind of cool little video that is just going to stand out more than your typical image. All right, so just jumping right in, I've got a document at a size of a thousand by a thousand pixels. I'm an illustrator here, and I basically have this, you know, it's a square format, kind of like what you would expect from Instagram. And I've also got my color palette down here that I've selected. So more muted tones, kind of earthy, just, just kind of like a color palette that I've been kind of intrigued with lately. Um, you'll notice that like a lot of the colors on my website are a little bit like more muted and kind of, and I bring a lot of these golds and these kind of like burnt golds. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna make a mid-century modern sort of like nightstand or something like that, just because I like how mid-century modern furniture is very, you know, simple, minimal, and kind of angular. You got some like basic shapes to, you know, make those um, pieces of furniture. And I think it'll just be pretty, pretty easy for me to articulate how to illustrate something like that because it's pretty much squares and, and basic shapes. So I'm gonna start off with my rectangle tool. I'm just gonna make this main section of the nightstand. So, got one big rectangle here. And then I'm gonna duplicate this by holding Alt and Shift and just bringing it up and then just scaling this down a little bit. I want it to be a smaller piece. And then holding Alt and Shift and just scaling it all up. This might be like the top of the, uh, top of the nightstand. Now, right now there's two different pieces here. We want this to have some sort of like a shadow so that you can see some depth and it kind of makes this not look as flat. So I'm gonna literally grab the same one, Alt and Shift, bring it down. And then I'm gonna bring these into the same width of my original shape. Now, once I have that selected, I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool and I'm gonna pick this darker color. So that's basically like a shadow of this piece up here. So we're kind of creating some dimension, some depth. Um, now what we wanna do is um, we want to make our legs for this desk. Let's actually shrink this down a little bit so we have more room. So I'll just select it all, hold Alt and Shift. So yeah, we wanna make our legs. So I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm just gonna come out a little bit from this corner and just kinda click, kinda figure out where I want this leg to kinda be maybe a little shorter like that. And I'm gonna click again. And then I'm just gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna come about this with click and hold and then kind of just make a little bit of a round bottom here because that's a lot of like how mid-century modern furniture is. It's like round on the bottom. These like peg legs. And then they're not perfect like this usually. They kind of have like a little bit of a taper. So I'm just gonna come up like this and connect this guy. Let's just zoom out and see how that's looking. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, again, we wanna make sure that there's some sort of shadow so there's like a separation between these two pieces. So I think to do that, I'm just gonna grab my pen tool again and I'm just gonna kinda trace the same outline and maybe come down like about here and about right here. So we're gonna give the illusion that there's a shadow here. So now we have that new piece made. I'm gonna grab my eyedropper one more time and select this darker color. So now you can kind of see it looks like there's some dimension and shadows going on here. So it literally looks like this, this leg is underneath this piece. Um, so now what we can do is just grab this, duplicate it, shift and alt and just drag it over and let's just reflect it. So transform reflect and just hit preview so you can see what's going on. And to make sure that these are the same distance from each other, we're just going to grab, we're just going to grab both of them and then see how we got that align tool that pops up in the middle. That should be centered. 
Let's go ahead and measure it. Sometimes I'll just make like a, another shape out of a different color, like a hot pink, and I'll just use it as my guide. So I'm gonna put it there and let's just see if that's truly, yep, see it fits in there perfectly. Because uh, we had that little smart guide in the middle. See how there's like a little um, X right here? That shows you the center point of this shape. So Illustrator kind of provides little training wheels that help you out. All right, we've got our legs there now. And um, I think I might want to add like one little smaller piece down here too. So I'm just going to grab this top piece, Alt and Shift, bring it down. And maybe let's just bring it in a little bit. So I'm going to grab Direct Selection Tool, grab these two anchor points, and just hold Shift and bring it in. So it brought it 10 pixels in. Do the same for this one. There we go. And just because I want a little bit more separation between these two pieces, I'm going to grab this shadow again. I'm just kind of bring it down so it clicks in. And let's just shrink this guy. So we're just kind of showing that there's separation here. This isn't necessarily a shadow. It just kind of helps frame. You can kind of see it gives a little bit more depth. So it's almost as if these pieces are extruding out from this piece, which kind of helps with like this just shape. So now that we've got that, we'll make a little... Uh, a little handle for you to open this thing up. So I'm just gonna grab a, my rectangle tool, go to the center of my object, hold Alt and Shift, and just make this uh, this kind of like square, but we're actually gonna rotate it and make it like a diamond. So it's like a cool little diamond element. And then I think I'll make this um, a color like this, like a gold color. So it kind of pops off a little bit. And see, that's our uh, that's our little nightstand. I think it's pretty simple, pretty cool, and uh, I might actually just decrease the shadow a little bit. But um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this object and select everything. We're gonna right click it and go to group. Um, so now this is all kind of like one object that we can use. And then I'm actually gonna label this uh, nightstand. So that's that's our first layer. Now we're gonna make a new layer. And let's make a little plant that can sit on top of this so that I'm kind of imagining we have this is one element, we have a plant here, and then maybe like a little like a uh, lamp. So we could have three elements that we can animate independently from each other. Um, so let's go ahead and make our, our plant. I'm going to grab a rectangle tool and I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to draw this little, little guy. And let's go ahead and just round the edges by holding, you see that little, uh, these little circles in the corner? If you hold that and you hold shift, you can bring these in. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring this down so it's, it's like sitting on this. And then I'm gonna copy this, Command C, and then edit, paste in place. So that literally just put another um, of the same object on top. I'm gonna grab these two points, and I'm gonna delete. And then I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool, and let's just grab a color like that. What we're doing here is making it look like it's one of those like ceramic dipped um, planters. So I'll just bring this back to the middle. So maybe the, um, you know, this this planter was dipped into like a different color paint or something. Um, but grab our eyedropper and let's use this uh, this other darker tan. There, so that's like our little our little pot for our plant. Um, and then now you'll probably, you've seen this in like one of my other tutorials where I made a little uh, kind of like leaf. I'm just gonna start at the origin point, come up to the top, and then just kind of bow this out a little bit. And then it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just a little like leaf, but it's kind of like try to mirror this, make it symmetrical. And let's grab our green color. And I probably want this to be a little bit behind. So if you hold um, command left bracket, there you push it behind the, the other layers. Um, and then since this is basically like a little uh, like snake plant or sansevieria, we're going to we're gonna grab another a few of these. So I'm just gonna to go to my rotate tool. I'm gonna to bring my pivot point down and I'm gonna drag this over. As I do that, I'm gonna click Alt. And then it makes a copy of it like that. Now, I want this piece to be behind that one. So I'm gonna to go to Command Left Bracket a few times. And that should have put it behind, let's see. I believe it is. Yeah, so once we have that, we want this to be a little bit of darker, darker green. So I'm gonna go to my darker green because this leaf is behind. And there you can see the separation between the two. We'll duplicate this one so that there's another, uh, another little leaf there. And there you have it, there's our little plant. Cute little plant. Um, and then we'll group this plant too. Um, we're gonna group you and we're gonna copy we're going to put this little plant on her own layer. So we'll delete, we'll call this plant, and we'll go to edit, paste in place. 
There, so now we have two elements already. We've got a little desk and we've got a little plant. So let's make one more element. Let's make a little um, like mid-century modern um, lamp. And this is just a kind of like, I don't know, I like this style because it's flat. It's easy to illustrate pretty quickly. Um, and then, you know, you can just put this straight in After Effects and animate it. You won't have to worry about scaling because it's vector. So it just lends itself really well to, um, to animation. So if you're wondering why I'm doing this. Um, all right, let's make our lamp. So <clears throat> I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. Like I said, we're doing basically all basic shapes in this. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and drag this. This is going to be the main part of like the lampshade. And it's not going to be green though. We'll probably sample this lighter color again. So that's going to be our main lampshade. And I want a little bit of hardware on this. Like maybe there's like a strip at the bottom. So I'll just duplicate this, bring this guy down and then put it at the bottom. So maybe there's some, some sort of like, you know, bronze kind of piece at the bottom here that's holding this lampshade together. It just gives us a nice like contrast here too. So there's our little lampshade. So let's go ahead and make the legs for our lamp. I'm gonna kind of do what I did earlier and just kind of draw with the pen tool some legs. Now that I think about it, we should probably put two more legs in the back to give it a little bit more depth. So let's just grab that leg, bring it over, shrink it down. Now let's make this a little bit darker too. Let's just get a little darker brown because it's further back into space and there's like, you know, there's definitely not a lot of light back here. So it, it kind of appears as if it's further back and in the shadows. And then we'll just drag this over with Alt and Shift. We'll reflect. Transform, reflect, hit OK, and then just grab both of them, make sure we're centered. There we go. So we just want to double check that everything's all layered up nicely. So this whole object, yep, there's the desk, or the nightstand, I should say. Here's our plant, it's on its own layer, and we've got our lamp here, which is on its own layer. So everything's pretty much extracted in its own little layer. This is going to come in handy when we're in After Effects and we're going to be animating each of these pieces independently of each other. So we'll go to File, Save, and we'll just call it um, Nightstand. Just save an AI, just Adobe Illustrator file here. Just hit OK for all this stuff. All right, so now that we're in After Effects, we're going to go to File, Import, File, File, Import, File. I'm gonna grab our nightstand um, document here, and click open. Now we're gonna to go to composition, not footage. If you put it as footage, it'll make everything flat. We want everything to be a composition and we don't want it to merge our layers. So composition is fine. And we're gonna grab our composition and just drag it in here. And so there's our illustration and see how everything is kept just how we had it in our Illustrator file. So. That's what's really nice about After Effects and Illustrator, they work really well together. Um, so let's click into this composition and you see it's comprised of, of our layers. So if I grab my plant, I can move it around. Let's go ahead and just make a quick little background color here. So if we go to layer, new, solid, um, let's just pick a color that's just kind of um, another like muted, uh, like earthy tone, just because I'm kind of feeling that vibe right now. Um, maybe like a off, grayish green let's see what that is. and when you make this it'll you can click make comp size it'll make it the same size as the square here so we made that let's just put it in the back so we just drag our layer to the back here that might be too dark so let's go to um, layer solid settings so we can edit that and let's just go a little bit lighter it'll kind of preview it on the right for you Something in that neighborhood seems okay. Um, cool, I'm okay with that. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna do some animation on this. So let's grab our lamp and let's see. Currently, our our composition looks like it's only four frames. So let's go to composition settings and let's change the duration of our of our footage here. So I think the minimum requirement for Instagram videos is like three seconds. So let's just make it five seconds. And then we can zoom out here. Cool. I'm just gonna extend all these guys to the end. 
Our composition size is five seconds. So you can see that here. Um, if I hit space bar, it'll play my comp. So let's just see. One, two, three, four, five. So you can see it's five, now it's looping. So we're gonna play around with five second animation here. So I've got my nightstand selected and I wanna click P to bring up my position value here. And see how there's like a little stopwatch? We want to basically click that to make a key, which is a kind of like a checkpoint animation. So if I make a key here and a key here, basically everything within this area is gonna be like the movement, the tween. So we want this to start off screen, so let's just move this to the very bottom. And notice how my time indication's at the very beginning, because that's where it's gonna start. So let's go ahead and click our little stopwatch. See how it made that blue key right there? So that's where it starts. Let's go out into time about, I don't know, 15 frames. You can see right here. And then let's just bring our desk, or sorry, our nightstand back up. I'm holding shift while I do this to keep it straight. Now, if I play this back, you see it kind of slide into frame like that. Now, that's kind of an abrupt tween. So I want to soften that and kind of make it a little bit more of an ease. So I'm going to go to window and I have this um, extension installed called Ease and Wiz. So I'll put the link in the description so you can download that, but it's pretty easy. Um, it basically gives you all these extra um, animation kind of presets to play around with. So you're going to select both of your frames and we're just going to apply we're gonna apply one of these ease things to it. So you kind of just go through and see which ones work for you. I like to play around like with Cirque a lot. Um, and let's just hit apply. And you're gonna see the difference here in the animation quality. See how it kind of snapped into place there? I think I might even add a motion blur onto this so that we can, um, it, you know, gives it more of a realistic feel. So if you click this button up here, it enables motion blur on your project. So let's click that. And then we actually have to turn this on for all of our um, layers as well. So go ahead and click this toggle switches. And then you can see the motion blur guy up here. Just select all those because we're, we're going to apply motion blur to all those layers. Um, but now if you look, it kind of blurs it as it's moving. See if I pause it here, you can kind of see the blur. That just gives it, like I said, like a more of a natural kind of realistic um, look. And it's something that I like to use in a lot of my animation because it just... It just feels right. So yeah, now we have this nice kind of smooth and buttery kind of animation effect where this nightstand is just kind of plopping into place here. Let's do the same thing for our lamp. Let's grab our lamp and we know that we want it to be here when it arrives. So we'll go ahead and click P and let's just turn our position on stopwatch. And then let's go back in time and move this guy up. Maybe he'll come in from the top. And then let's just see what happens here when I hit spacebar. Boom. Oh, I didn't apply the uh, ease and width, so let's grab this. Apply. You gotta always make sure you do that so they have the same effect. Look at that, they're kind of like meeting in the middle here. So maybe this plant can kind of like pop up from the, from the uh, nightstand here. So I'm gonna make sure that this layer is behind the nightstand. And so maybe these two elements kind of arrive at the same time and then the plant appears behind from this area. So let's go ahead and start the tween here. Click our position. I'm just going to drag this out a little bit because that's where we want it to end. And then maybe around here where these two arrive, that's when the plant comes out. So we'll just kind of put this behind. It's going to kind of peek out. And then we'll apply our same effect here. And let's just see what happens here. Oh, you know what? We need to hide this plant at the very beginning. So I'm just gonna drag these frames so they're hidden and it'll only appear here. Cool, so let's play this. There it is. It might be a little fast. Maybe we can drag this frame out a little bit so you can see it a little bit longer. So there you go. We have this cool animation that's just uh, kind of looping as of right now. This is only just a couple seconds, but I'd recommend, you know, definitely making it a minimum of three, three seconds so that you can put it on Instagram. Um, but I'll show you how to export this too. So once you have your animation pretty much good to go and you're happy with it and it's at least three seconds, you're going to make sure that this little area right here, this is what you have highlighted. This is your render area. So you're going to drag this to however long you want it. So in this case, we go to three to three. Um, and this is what will get rendered. Just this. So what you're gonna do is you have your 
area selected, you're gonna go to composition and you're gonna go to add to render queue. Now we're gonna just pull this up so you can see what's going on here. So once you've clicked that, you're gonna go to lossless. It's this little blue link right here, you might've missed it, but lossless and you're gonna go to format options. For this, we're gonna change our video codec to H.264. This will just compress it and make sure it's not a super big file. And we'll hit okay. Um, once you've got that, this all looks good. Quick time RGB. Um, if you have any audio, um, you'll wanna like specify your things here. But let's just click okay. And then you'll go to output two. And then you'll just kinda de like declare where you want this to go. So we'll just put it in this this folder. Um, once you got that, you're pretty much ready to render. And that's a quick animation, so it doesn't take too long. You'll get a cool little sound like and um, you'll be able to review your video. So once you've got your video rendered here and you can preview it, just email this file to yourself and you should be able to just upload that straight to Instagram. So you'll save it to your camera roll and just upload it straight to Instagram. And as long as it's three seconds, Instagram allows that and you're good to go. I hope this uh, helped you learn a little bit more about animation and illustration. And I just want to say thank you guys for watching my videos and subscribing. It really means a lot to me. I love all the comments that you're leaving. So definitely leave some comments. Let me know what you think and subscribe and I'll bring you more videos.